Good morning, everyone. Trackman44 here. Hey, uh, what we're doing today, we're going to do a uh, do-it-yourself wall bracket for a central air conditioning system. We got the new air conditioner from my son's house. It's sitting over there in a box. I had my son go ahead and knock out the side pieces. I took the opportunity to go ahead and paint it. So these are the two halves that he went ahead and made, and the boards indicate uh, the cross pieces I'm going to be making right now, which is quite simple. So that's where we're at today, guys. Like I said, this is a do-it-yourself wall bracket. You don't have to make it near as heavy as what this is. Uh, my gosh, this will support a phenomenal amount of uh, amount of weight compared to what that little simple air conditioner is going to weigh. But it doesn't matter. You can uh, go and buy your materials and everything at whatever supply house you have, uh, or Home Depot, whatever. But I prefer to use scrap material, and we just build out of whatever we have in stock. Well, you can see the unpainted metal uh, setting where they're going to actually reside permanently. But now it's time to take them in and go ahead and drill the bolt holes in preparation for, uh, for bolting instead of welding. That way we'll have both options available. Okay, there's the pieces drilled and painted and hanging on the gooseneck safety chains to, to cure. The next time you see that will be a, being assembled. And speaking of assembly at the job site, if you look close, you can see three holes, one up the top and then two underneath the cross brace to, uh, to give ease for access of the rotor hammer into the concrete wall. And the process that we'll do is we'll hang one, doesn't matter which one, but we'll hang one, get that secure, squared up against the wall and latch down with the three anchors. Then we'll level with a four foot level across to the second one, get the proper spacing, and then go ahead and shoot those in with three three-eighths anchors uh, heavy wall anchors for the uh, concrete foundation wall. So here you have it. Here's the basic rundown, the basic layout, and the basic procedure that I go through and have gone through many times in the past on building these things out of either new material or scrap material uh, for the job site. If I'm doing them for myself, for my relatives, family, whatever, uh, it's all scrap material. But whenever I was doing it commercially and doing it you know, for customers, it would all be new material. Regardless of how heavy you build it, 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 it should be substantial enough you know, to hold that and a lot of times because they are up so high I don't mind them being just a little bit on the heavy side simply because many times whenever you're servicing these you're standing with one foot on a six foot ladder up four or five steps and the other foot's going to have to be resting somewhere on this bracket or you're going to have to be laying belly first over the air conditioner in order to get in to work on something. That having been said you understand the need or the desire for myself to build them a little bit heavy. Well, I'm over at my son's house. We're getting ready to go ahead and, and uh, put those brackets on the wall. It's going to be a little aggravating to work around the, uh, the existing air conditioner, but we need to leave this in place until we get the new one set on top so I can recover the refrigerant um, and then go ahead and connect the refrigerant lines, do an evacuation, and then go ahead and recharge the uh, or, or turn loose the new system's charge and then go ahead about the business of, of checking it out and all that stuff. Now, the first thing you got to do whenever you're putting up these brackets, of course, is decide where you want to put it. And what I've done, I've taken my level and I've drawn a level line across here. But that way we can get them reasonably close to uh, to being the same elevation. First thing we're going to do is get this thing up there and get one hole marked to the top. Now if you're lucky enough to work around construction your whole life, you'll come across a lot of tools that are that are damaged, thrown away. A lot of times the contractors will send them in to uh, get them repaired and the repair bill is, is very near to or exceeds the cost of a new one. So you end up with lots of cool stuff. This particular one here was a hammer drill that was actually broken in half and uh, they discarded it. I brought it home, put it back together and then taped it in place with some good old electrical tape. And uh, so far, I've been using it for about 10 or 12 years and it's uh, just doing fine. I selected just a standard uh, 5 16 uh, sleeve anchor, which takes a 3 8 inch hole. Once you decide what you want, you go ahead and measure for the depth that you need. This here says inch and 7 8 I like to add just a little bit to it uh, to give just a little bit of room for the powder that's going to accumulate that you're not going to get completely out of the hole, especially if you don't have a means to blow with. So at that point, now you know you want 2 inches, essentially. Measure down on your drill bit and go ahead and put you a, uh, a ring of tape around at the 2 inch level. Now you're ready to go back to business of drilling your hole.
Now with that first one in there, you can square this thing up or plumb it up. Now if it turns out that it's not perfectly level this way right here, you just loosen those a little bit and slip another washer in behind or a little bit of a, a shim in order to cock it this way or that. Whether you need to put it at the top to tilt it down or at the bottom to tilt it up. So let's see how close we are. Well, it's in the bubble. So that's a good thing. The second one is never as easy as the first because you have a specific dimension now that you have to work to, and that dimension being the width, especially if you have pre-made pieces that have to bolt together to hold this thing in parallel. So what I've done is I've taken that measurement and I made a vertical line right here. That's going to be the outside, the outside line up for this guy here. Now all I have to do is get out of here. So whenever you hammer these in and pull them up really, really tight with your, your anchor, sometimes it wants to pull the bracket left to right. Okay? And when that happens, you have to pry everything back apart in order to fit this. I had to pry this one this direction here about, about an inch or inch and a quarter in order to get it to come in. But let me tell you what you do if you're like me and forget your two foot square back at the shop. Just to check and see how square it is, what you can do is use the multiples of six, eight, and 10. So in this case, because it's kind of tight configuration here, uh, six, eight, and 10 was only gonna measure up, you know, just a, a little bit here. What you can do is you can go 12 and make a mark right here at 12, like you can see, and then 16 because multiples of eight times two is 16. And then 10, of course, is going to be 20. So if you're square, you measure from this mark right here to the same side of the rule over here to your mark right on the, and I am at 20, absolutely perfect, 20 inches. So that means that six, eight, and 10 measurement guarantees that this guy's perfectly, perfectly square with the foundation. Gotta leave something for my son to do. So this little cross piece right here, that's going to go back behind the condenser I'm going to let him go ahead and drill these two uh, 3 8 holes and then mount that back there. Let him drill that by hand. But first, I guess maybe we probably ought to check and make sure it's going to be substantial enough. If it's not going to hold a silly little central air conditioning condenser, now's the time to find out. Well, I think it'll hold adequately. Uh, I weigh a heck of a lot more than any little old two and a half or three ton central air conditioner. And you know what? This is Tractor Man 44. And I'm out of here, guys.